Welcome to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Whether you're 25 or 45, there's bound to be a discussion that you care about. Our mission is to share practical ways to find God in your everyday life. And now today's host, Chris Lang. Single parent families have become a permanent and noticeable feature in many societies today. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, between 1970 and the year 2000, the number of single mothers increased from 3 million to 10 million, and the number of single dads went from 400,000 to 2 million. And research suggests that over 50% of American children will live in a single parent household for some period of their childhood. In other countries, such as England and Sweden, almost half of the children are now being born out of wedlock. What are some of the special challenges facing single parent families? And how can a Christian successfully meet the challenge of raising children as a single parent? Hi, I'm Chris Lang, and today's topic is Hope for Single Moms. We recognize that there are a lot of dads out there, so no disrespect to you gentlemen, but uh, I believe you'll be blessed by the discussion, uh, even though today we're focusing on moms. So I want to introduce uh, my guests in the studio today, Angelique Gardner and Esther Salemi. 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 <laughs> yes. uh, are joining me right here in the studio from the Orlando area. Welcome, uh, Thank you. Angelique and Thank you. Esther. Thank you very much. Also, joining us via audio chat is uh, our new friend Stacy Fields today. Welcome, Stacy. Hi, I'm happy to just correct you. My last name is Lawrence right now. Oh, okay, Lawrence. I saw an email. I guess we've been we've been getting different emails uh, back and forth. So, it's Stacy Lawrence. No, that that's okay. Yes. All right. Well, welcome. You're in the great state of Arizona. I understand. Is that correct? Yes, and it's gorgeous today. I understand you had the blessing to have your devotions in a hot tub this morning, and we're all je- <laughs> we're all we're all jealous, yeah. right? Yes, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, well, let's get started. I want to hear a little bit uh, from uh, each of you, a little bit about your background to give a context for our, our discussion today. Angelique, why don't you start? I'm Angelique Gardner. I have one son. He's uh, 12 and a half, going on 22, so he thinks. <laughs> He'll be 13 in a couple of months. Yeah. Um, and I've uh, been single basically most of his life. Um, my uh, ex-husband and I had separated when uh, he was before he was born, actually, a few uh, weeks before he was born. And uh, we were divorced about two when he was two. So, uh, in, you know, been basically a single mom. Uh, and uh, it's been uh, a challenge but it's also been a blessing uh, it's been a blessing in growing up and in faith and hope and just uh, hanging on to God through those ups and downs and so valleys. so that so so he was two years old when you were divorced officially and, mm-hmm. and how old is he now he's 12 and a half almost 12. 13 oh, going on to 13 going on 30 yes yes right. exactly <laughs> okay he wants to tell mom what to do so 10 year, 10 years God's <laughs> been God's been taking care of you and your son and quite honestly, the whole 12 and a half years, because like I said, uh, we separated. I separated from okay. my ex uh, a few weeks before he was even born. So, okay. All so, right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Stacy uh, in Arizona, how about you sharing a, a little brief summary of, about you? Where are you coming from in this discussion today? Well, I am a mom of four teenagers, and I made the choice a couple of years ago after the divorce from their dad to let them go live with their dad and uh, simply because of our economic situation and um god has god has been right there he was he was he's been my all in all he's been my everything and that, that's just something that i'd like to share today great that, uh, so how long for anybody who needs him how long ago were you divorced and uh how long ago did you uh how, how long were you taking care of your your four children by yourself as a single mom um divorced seven years ago and so i had the children for six years by myself okay all right that gives a context uh for for later on esther what about you um my name is esther and i had my daughter when i was 18 years old um and her father and i separated um 
about when I was pregnant. <laughs> um, and I've, she's 13 now and I've done it by myself. Um, we have not seen him since. Um, she has no relationship with him. So I, it's been the joy and the love of the extended family um, who was able to embrace her and that I was able to raise her. Um, being a young mom, it's, you know, you're by yourself, you're alone, you have no one. So um, it, it's been a challenging um, 13 years by myself. Um, there pretty much is no dating life. This is it, my life, <laughs> being a mom. Um, and I maybe 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 uh, her son and your daughter can you know eventually. Uh, they're you know. very good friends, believe it or not, and they actually believe that they're siblings. So yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's some family so support, family support. Mm -hmm. Yes, going absolutely. On. Um, and so it's it's been. I will be an empty nester at 35, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so um, with that in mind, um, she's 13 and she's doing it all right now and loves church. And it's, I, I believe it's about the upbringing and the support of family and friends and the church that gets you through a lot Amen. of your things. Amen. I have to agree. Let's talk about the, um, the initial uh, difficulty, the, the fear factor, the emotions of being a single parent. What, what's it like? Uh, what somebody is watching today, maybe she's a single parent, she's pregnant, and she's afraid. Uh, let's start with the, just the fear factor of being a single parent. Maybe, maybe you weren't separated yet, but you felt it coming at the time. Um, exactly. Uh, uh, Stacy, you were married when you had your kids, but in, you know, in some respects, Angelique, why don't you start? With that context, um, with my situation, it was very scary. And um, you know, basically, when he left, uh, money and financial, you know, I needed that support. And I was looking at perhaps even filing bankruptcy. How was I going to live? How was I going to pay the rent and the electricity? You know, just basic needs. You know, like your world, your bottom just kind of falls out from you. Um, and I had a job at the time that didn't have maternity, so the whole six to eight weeks I was going to be off. I was not going to be paid, and I was relying on his job or whatnot to bring us through so that was just like a financial mess um, but thank God uh, as Esther mentioned earlier um, that my family came through my brother paid some of my utility bills my mom and and I did have some money saved so I was able to make it through but it was very scary at first and you just at, when you're staring at that hole or that nothing not not knowing what um all i could do is just even pregnant fall to my knees crying and saying god you know but eventually he brought me through and it made me so much stronger now while i'm on the other side what about you esther um with my situation um being 18 you're still a kid you know nothing mm -hmm. i mean i was just literally right out of high school within a month um of having her um so i had no job I had no college education, I had nothing. Um, and being from a culture of my parents from the islands, um, it's, I got disfellowship from church, literally just shunned, wow. kicked out, um, not allowed to attend um, because I was a single mom, young and not married. Um, mm -hmm. So for that period of time, it was very, very hard for me because mm. I was literally alone. My father being the head elder of the church, mm. it was, having to save face you know what are people going to think mm -hmm. the community is talking about me not worried about I'm 18 I'm young this is my granddaughter he disowned my parents actually did disown me for about six months to a year never looked at my daughter never acknowledged my presence in the house or anything um, mm -hmm. I was yeah. blessed enough to go to school um, and became a nurse um, two years later um, and with that um, doing it by myself, I was able to start, of course, supporting myself with finally a career. Um, and I really, truly think that that was a blessing because most young moms don't have that opportunity to, to go to school and do something with themselves. It's basically jumping into the workforce, making minimum wage, and having to struggle from paycheck to paycheck. Um, being shunned from the church, that was very, very hard for me because I was looking for them for support, and I got the opposite. Um, it, I had to retrain mm -hmm. myself and trying to be an example for my daughter to go to a different church, of course, same denomination, but different church, and finding hope and finding um, family and a support group in a new church. Um, 
and I found that here at, at Forest Lake. Um, they, the people here have been a blessing. Um, I was able to put her in the school um, for several years, mm-hmm. and being a single mom, that's, wow, your child in private school. So um, that was truly a blessing for me, and I was able to rebuild my faith, and rebuild my relationship with the Lord, mm-hmm. and have my daughter, who's now 13, enjoy church so much that she won't miss it for anything. Well, let's talk about uh, managing your household as a single mom and um, holding down a job. I mean, uh, sort of multitasking. Stacy, <laughs> Stacy, how did you do it with four kids uh, for seven years before before you had to make some financial tough choices last year? It oh, it was it was too much for me. I uh, I got to the point where uh, I had never when he when he left when he filed for divorce and left. I had never worked outside the home while I'd had children. I'd had businesses, but they were always within the home environment. Mm-hmm. So that in itself was a new issue for me to tackle. Um, and then not being able to be there for the kids and you know keeping the house up, that was another struggle. But um, I, I was able to get a job at the school. They were also in a, a private Christian school and I was able to teach there. So our hours were the same but it wasn't enough to pay the bills. So I ended up getting um, eventually three other part-time jobs. So it was a total of four jobs. Um, Plus I was going to night school trying to get my degree so that I could continue in that job that kept the kids in the school and um, just doing the maintenance on the house and in the yard and dealing with the children's (laughs) emotional trauma issues that they, you know, we're dealing with mm-hmm. it was a lot like it got to the point where i was pulling two all-nighters a week and and still not quite making it wow. and I, I i did that about a about a year and i i just remember that whole year i i was telling people we were military and so when he left i wasn't around any family at all and i i had a similar experience with the church um i was expecting them to be there and we were shunned because um, I, I was divorced and, and I didn't even have a hand in that, but I still suffered the consequences of his decision. Mm-hmm. So um, the lack of support, the lack of time, um, the lack of finances and the lack of sleep, it, it caught up with me. And um, mm. my, uh, my body actually shut down before my brain did. I, wow. I had a, uh, wow. they thought I had a brain tumor because my adrenal gland, it just wouldn't shut off. I was on the go all the time. Mm-hmm. And um, it was at that point, it was just uh, as the school semester ended and summer was starting that I, I just went to bed. <laughs> mm-hmm. They went to go visit their dad for a couple of weeks in the summer and I withdrew from the college classes that I had signed up for. And I just went to bed. And it was the first time for over a year that I'd actually just stopped. Um, that high alert, high go, gotta get all done. Stacy, hold, hold that thought, Super Mom. We'll be right back. You're listening to Hope on Fire. Welcome back. I'm Chris Lang, your host on Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. I'm here in the studio today talking about uh, hope for single moms with my friends Esther and Angelique and also via audio chat in Arizona, uh, Stacy Lawrence. Stacy, welcome back. Thank you. And Angelique and Esther as well. Thank you. Before the break, uh, Stacy, you were sharing your emotional journey of uh, talking about how your body was shutting down through this incredible challenge that you were faced uh, uh, raising your four children and uh, during the break we were talking and I I wanted each of you to share a little bit about how is it that you in your commitments as moms you know single moms uh, putting your children's needs ahead of your own Uh, Stacy you were talking about how your body shut down your adrenal glands basically uh, went into the tank Uh, how do you how do you go about finding balance uh, in in that journey, and I'm and, and I'm sure each of you have maybe a little different way of sh- of sort of perceiving that. So I'd like to hear from each of you. Uh, start with you, a- Angelique. Um, 
first and foremost for me, like I said, has always been God and having that relationship with him. Um, and then also like family and friends. Um, but yes, when you had made the comment, uh, putting uh, your child before you, uh, that's what I always did. And um, Esther sometimes teases me because she sees some of my old clothes in the closet because she's like, you haven't updated these things in years. <laughs> and I hadn't because it's always like buying clothes for him. And I'm like, oh, you know, this is not really in style. It's cute. <laughs> yeah. So I just always made do as a single mom because you're, you know, my son also is in private school and trying mm-hmm. to keep the private Christian school and the house and lawn and all that stuff on my own uh, repairs and also maintaining. It was just, and working and trying to help him with schoolwork. So it was always so much on the plate. Um, but through it all, I, f- through family, friends, and just, you know, g- getting with myself and having that private time alone. Um, I'm actually, and a lot of friends said I help them, and sometimes talking with them and sharing with them because I'm also a life coach, which I've told you right. about. Right, yeah. um, and uh, in doing that, I've kind of... So are you kind of, kind of preaching to yourself while you help other I people? I do. I mean, because yeah. talking to other people, it's like Preach it, it, it comes sister. to me. <laughs> it comes to me, too. It's like it bounces right back to me. And I'm like, you know, I'm telling them and yeah. sharing and helping them through their problems. It's like and it's coming back to my spirit, so it's too, as to what, to, you know, as the road to walk. And, the, you know, so Great. it's not it's not a magic thing. It's just one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, and just take it as it comes. How about you, Esther? <laughs> You know, I truly believe it's a mother's love and a mother's instinct. You always put your baby cub first. Mm-hmm. Um, with no matter if, even if it's the last plate or your last twenty bucks, you know, it's always usually she'll need it for something. Then, you know, I'll do with that. I'll make do with what I have. You know, mm-hmm. then I'm probably picking through change in the car or something for whatever I need. And the same thing with you know eating or anything in life. You know. I may decide, oh, I have a little bit of extra money this week. Great, I'm gonna go do this. And she calls, mom, I need this. And you're like, okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, you know, and there yep. goes your plans, you know. Um, so with- No, no self-pity, Esther? Um, you know, I've been doing it since I was 18, my whole adult life. To me, this is the norm. Okay. This is what I do. This is, being a mom is it for me. I think that when I turn 35 and she's gone, I'm literally gonna be lost, because <laughs> I won't know you know, I, my whole da- day is starting off with her. She needs breakfast. I'm making lunch for her. Coming home in the middle of the day, kind of getting dinner. St- I'm just, I do mm-hmm. everything for her. So when mm-hmm. that's all I know, I know nothing else mm-hmm. as an adult. So just so. constant adjusting to the growth of your child. Yes. Yes. You're going through the what stages. Mm-hmm. Go go ahead, Stacy. You had a comment. Uh, when yeah, when I first went through that, which was not too long ago, it was the first time since I was a teenager that I did not have children. I didn't have to mm. work on somebody else's schedule. Yeah. And if I felt like a hot dog, I'd go get one yeah. <laughs> at the store. <laughs> I didn't have to tell anybody I was going. And yes. my daughter and I, mm. we had conversations over the phone and, and it was really neat. It was a bonding time for us because all of a sudden she was really busy. She um, she took over the, the role of, of taking care of herself. Mm-hmm. And and so it was it was neat. She grew up faster than I I was expecting, but it was good for us. I'm I'm excited for you too when when that time comes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I totally understand cuz at the end of the day I'm checking if, you know, Angela calls and say, "Hey, let's have dinner tonight." I got to check her schedule and say, "Okay, kid, what are you doing today? <laughs> Do you have a game? Do you have a social event? Mm-hmm. Do you have a church event? And then if she's like, no, I'm okay, then I'm like, okay, yeah, we can or go Or sometimes something. I'll call Esther and say, you know, let's meet up with our kids. Because for me, and I think Esther, uh, she likes to cook. I do not like to cook. And so, <laughs> All right. so I'm You're always super. like, let's go to a restaurant. Let's get our kids. <laughs> let's meet up and go to a restaurant. So um, so that's always something. We so, so, do. so as a single mom, does the Google technologies of the world and all of the new gadgets to, con- to, to automate your schedule, are they helping you in being a mom? Um, yes, for me. I, you know. Yeah, see, I, I'm I, like on, the I have not used an alarm clock <laughs> since she was born. I automa- If I tell myself that I need to get up, I'm automatically up 30 minutes beforehand, even if it's 3 a.m. You know, to go to the airport, I'm up 30 minutes before or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's just I have this routine. Even though she's 13, her bedtime is 8.30. 
That means TV's mm-hmm. off. That means cell phones in my room. Nine o'clock, lights are off. I give you 30 minutes to kind of wind down, kind of get your, your book bag ready for tomorrow. So you've got like a fishing rod I to do. grab the cell phone back into the room and Absolutely. it's gone for the day. And then TV, it's a TV is in, it, not in, I don't believe kids should have TVs in the room, so it's in a common area. Computer's off, TV's off. Cell phone's in my room, 8.30, that's it. And people are like, well, she's 13. I, yeah, well, you know, at, mommy needs time too. So I'm very big, as Angela always knows, me time. If I don't have that same me time um, for that one hour or two hour before I go to bed, then, you know, then I start to have sort of like that resentment and I'm just tired. I don't have that time for myself. So I really had to space that out a little bit and have a strict schedule for her so that way I can have a little bit of time for myself to just do nothing, not think about anything, do nothing, just, That sounds very healthy, Esther. Mm -hmm. That's such a good example for her too, though. Uh, oh yeah, your daughter exactly. is seeing the way you're living your life and regimenting and organizing and structure. Mm-hmm. That's the only mm-hmm. way for, for personally for me again. You know, being a young mom and not having that learning and seeing other people doing it, it was just I did it. I had to do. I had to come up with my own personal schedule, my own way of doing things, um, mm-hmm. because again, it was you're you're running all over the place. And I hear Stacy say that, and she's all over the place, and it does catch up to you mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. You're 20 and then you're looking 45 and people are like, oh my God, you know, it's, <laughs> so, you know, those things I like, keep in mind and I, you know, and don't finish that. Yeah. Don't, don't finish that age, right? <laughs> so, well, what about careers? I mean, you, you, each of you have had different journeys in that area. Some single moms are watching today. Um, what would you, uh, what would you say as you've uh, been on your career path? To them today as far as if they're looking for I got lucky with healthcare and with nursing because nursing you have so many avenues and ways of working with it um, being a nurse for 10 years and I can't believe it's been that long I'm embarrassed to say that but being a nurse for 10 years it's I've I've done from working in the hospital to administrative to now I'm marketing and so I have that flexibility with my schedule that I go in the morning time I can stop during the middle of the day you know by the house and then I can come back and be home before my daughter gets home so I have that flexible schedule and if there's anything I need to do in the evening times I usually tell her come on you're volunteering today Um, and she comes with me Um, because a lot of times when people are sick they want to see kids they want to see a cheerful Mm -hmm. face so um, for me healthcare really worked out for me it was a blessing um, that if I'm tired of one avenue that I can go into the law nursing if I get tired with that I can go back into the hospital or marketing or stuff like that so it's very flexible are you uh, are you seeing uh, employers more more uh, uh, accommodating for single parents single moms uh, what what's your experience Anjali um, personally um, the company I work for is somewhat um, it's a very stressful I work in the insurance industry and litigation so it's a very stressful um, job um, and a lot to do in a 40 hour week it's really a 60 plus hour job that you're trying to cram into 40 hours so that's when the stress level can go up um, but I have to admit the company I do work for that they do sometimes I say I have to leave whatever they're like okay no problem fine um, it's just a responsibility of knowing you're leaving stuff that's not done it kind of weighs on you mm-hmm. um, you know so for me for career wise uh, in the business sector insurance industry like I said it's kind of stressful and it's always and I don't um, in Esther's you know like you said different avenues that you can take where I am it's kind of a just the same career path and choice but for me I feel a, a stronger pull towards like I said the life coaching I feel uh-huh. like that's a calling on well, more in that case avenue. you're, you're kind of ma- you're managing your own schedule that way too exactly if you're consulting mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the things I have some friends uh, single moms who are uh, ultrasound technicians mm-hmm. um, uh, healthcare is going to be a growing industry till yeah. Jesus comes and um, these are areas that do have some flexibility mm-hmm. in the way that they engage in, in scheduling their mm-hmm. careers. Mm-hmm. And they're paid very well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a couple minutes left. This thing has flown by. <laughs> uh, what about positive role models for your kids? Stacy, uh, 30 seconds. W- what, what concerns do you have as a single mom for role models for your kids? Well, I had three boys, and so that was difficult. I got them involved in scouts. I, um, it's, I would say imperative that they get in some kind of sports mm-hmm. or um, extracurricular activities with um, some solid role models that are men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Angelique? Um, being that I have a son as well, that was something that was always a concern, having a father figure for him. Uh, he does not spend a lot of time with his father. Um, and so I wanted someone who has that. Um, and actually, God is blessed because I am engaged. And Congratulations. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and my fiance is, uh, you know, really a wonderful, wonderful uh, father himself from his previous relationship. And so he's been a great role model for my son, who was at first was a little resistant, but he's enjoying it. He's enjoying it. Are you fine? Are you? finding the uh, are you finding the church to be a good source of positive role models Esther yes I am um, the youth pastor here my daughter adores and loves because he kind of gets down to their level a little bit and um, pastor Mark yes <laughs> pastor Mark I love him to death and um, Mark are you listening to the program <laughs> we're shouting out to you absolutely right. um, He's and I always tell him, you know, you have the leeway when you guys are going camping, you're able to discipline her. And when she comes home, she's getting a whole nother set of discipline. <laughs> and he gets a kick out of that because he's like, you're an awesome mom. You really, you know, get the reins on her. And I said, oh, yeah, at this age. Absolutely. So um, he is such you know he makes he says she told to me one day she goes mom church is so fun with pastor mark i'm learning about jesus and it's not boring and i love coming to church yeah. um and that is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. such a blessing at 13 when there mm -hmm. have so many other avenues pulling them and there's not a th there's not an event that's not happening that wednesday night friday night saturday that sh i'm not bringing her to because she looks forward to that. Mm -hmm. That's so. tremendous. Mm -hmm. Feel, mm -hmm. feeling, feeling roots that are being developed at the church setting. Oh, Angelique, you had something else? Well, or? yeah, I was just going to say how my son was, when I first came to this church, Forest Lake, uh, my son just was telling me, I have to be at Sabbath school. And before the church, yes. and before he never wanted to go to Sabbath school. And now it's like, Mom, we got to be on time. I got to go to Sabbath school. <laughs> so he was always uh, like, to <laughs> Thank you all for joining me today, <laughs> Stacy and Angelique and Esther. Thank you. thank you. Single parents can find reassurance from Psalms 127, verse 3, that says, Children are a blessing and a gift from the Lord. When children are raised in a single parent family, they're no less precious in God's eyes. Our Creator desires to see fa single parent families succeed. Single parents, you can be certain that God is ready to support you too. God bless you. See you next time. Hope on Fire is produced by Livestreams Media, a listener supported ministry. To download a free copy of today's program or be a part of our social network, please visit our website at hopeonfire.org. You may also contact us by writing to Livestreams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida 32860, or online at hopeonfire.org. Thank you so much for your letters and continued support. Until next time, may God set your hope on fire.